Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So uh, anyways, in the last video, we showed that we could calculate thrust that would lift the whole vehicle to proper speed. And now we need to really work on the design on how that actually can be achieved, right? So, you know, the basic idea is that right now we have the forces of thrust that are very independent in our model of the actual speed of the propellers. And so it's really the idea of using this to calculate all of this, right? So I'm gonna remove this, right? And I'm gonna use this, all right? And let's essentially introduce subsystem, right? So subsystem. Go retrieve that in a second. And I'll just call this for right now thrust calculation. All right. Okay. And I think I'll make it a little bit smaller just so I can have four of them that will fit in there nicely for us. Um, and I think instead of calculating or pulling out speed and even converting it to RPM. I will even get rid of the bus and we'll just, or the bus selector, we'll just bring it in straight like that, right? So that's kind of the basic idea of how I want to get this set up, right? And um, let's see, well, let's work with this. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to open up this model. So I was practicing earlier. I'll even show you kind of what I ended up with. So that's going to be our calculation, but I'll, I'll kind of take you through that. And so I'm going to delete this. And I will paste this in. All right. And then what I have here is essentially me just generating a bus calculation, all right, so that I can essentially design my algorithm based on it. And so I've calculated motion right there, and I've chosen a thrust of 100. And you'll see that the overall bus that's being filled by each of my motors or my propellers is going to be motion, torque, but then I got speed, which is simply picking that out of the PVA motion command, and then I'm multiplying it by that torque to get power, right? And uh, I think this, well, it's try. Let's hit run. I wanted to show kind of what we have here for motion. Okay. And that, uh, you know, this is just kind of numbers I chose off the top of my head, but uh, we're going to go from zero to 10,000 in five seconds. All right. And so there's my position. I'm having it be in the negative direction. Uh, there's my velocity, there's my acceleration, right? So, let's construct thrust from this. And so I'm going to call this motion, oh no, it's called M bus for like motor bus. And here, I'm going to call it, um, I'll call it, uh, well, let's call it uh, force drag, no, let's call it this, <laughs> lift drag bus. Okay, all right, and so now let's put it in a bus selector. Let's connect into it right there. And that our, most of this can be based on speed, and so we're going to pull the speed out right now. Right, so speed select, and that's what we have right there, speed, right? And the, the lift calculation, and, and I definitely have a fair bit of background in, in like fluid mechanics, and my PhD was like aeronautics and astronautics, so I'm definitely kind of tapping into that right now, but I think that the explanation for lift as I'm going to formulate it, it, it can be explained, uh, I think, in a reasonable way. All right, but let me go ahead and construct and then 
then uh, I'll talk a little, I'll come in a little bit on it. And so um, it begins with getting this product block, right? And there's lots of ways you could take the square of the signal, but ultimately what I am saying here is that the lift will be proportional to the speed squared, not just the speed. And uh, one way of thinking of that is like the Bernoulli's equation. You get something like u squared over 2, and you got a delta p, and you, I, I guess perhaps you have maybe like a gravitational, you know, or potential energy change that's that's being kind of monitored by that equation, right? But the, the basic rule we're going for is speed squared, right? And next thing we're going to do is we're just going to combine a lot of stuff. You, know, you can get into some theories of... of uh, of uh, expressing lift and drag and all that kind of stuff, but I think this will make sense what I'm doing. Is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just multiply it by k sub l, right? So some lift coefficient. Now the block will glow in pink because I've created a parameter, but I haven't assigned it yet, right? But it's going to be as simple as that. And I think that we can express, you know, um, in a useful way, you know, the thrust that we will get being proportional to, to the, the speed of rotation squared for the propeller. Now, what's, you know, certainly um, loaded into this parameter is not only what we traditionally think of as a lift coefficient, but certainly the dimensions of the propeller in general and all kinds of stuff. So, so anyways, but I think that this will suit our needs pretty well. Now, the other thing I want to do is to account for the drag you know like how much work does it really you know i'll call it aerodynamic work does it take to actually spin this propeller through air to to generate that thrust and so i'm going to introduce another parameter and we call it minus one divided by l to d lift to drag right and that the basic idea is that the load on the propeller will be proportional to the lift that we're getting and I'm going to need to do one more thing on this, all right? And I'm going to get use this product again. Okay. And that speed's coming in, but for lift, it's going to be squared. So we don't care if it's negative or positive. But the load that the motor is going to feel to drive the torque that will make it spin, it kind of needs to know what direction the propeller is spinning in, all right? And, um, and so anyways, we're going to take this and we're going to multiply by, we're not multiply, we're going to operate on it with what's called the sine function, which basically um, is going to be equal to either 1 or minus 1 based on the, the sine of that speed. And with that, I think we got a good calculation of the load, the torque load, right? And so now I'm going to, because I like buses, and I think there's a good reason to like buses as much as I do, but is use that then to to carry that signal. Right. And so this will be, and I'm going to use this terminology force Z, right? And that'll be the local reference of the propeller, or you might call it the propeller motor, and then this one will be torque Z. And now you'll see in the bus creator, those names have been, been assigned for those signals. So that's how we'll draw upon them. All right. And uh, I'll finish off with just kind of dealing with the, um, the glowing parameters. And so I'm going to put a mask on this block now. I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right. And the mask is what enables me to create a user interface. If I double click on it now, it just goes into what we created inside that block. But oops. Oh, let's put a user interface, and we call that the masking of the subsystem. And I'll introduce the lift coefficient. All right, so this will be the prompt. And I like to put units in here, and I know thrust itself will be newtons, but the lift coefficient delivers newtons when it multiplies a propeller speed squared. And so I'm going to put in a divide and then introducing additional per, 
um, parentheses, radians per second, and then I'll put that at squared, right? And so this is simply what we call K sub, uh, yeah, subscript L. I think I did it all capitals, right? Well, we'll find out, right? And uh, let's go here now, and that this will be our width to drag. coefficient and our units here will be meters because it's simply a length unit times the the width that we're going to get from this and so i think i called this l to d right, and so let's save that and close it and uh, i think i got to divide by so i'm going to just put in ones instead of zeros for right now and yeah, it looks good now. Okay, so that's our, our basic calculation. Um, right, and so this is what I'd, uh, let's go ahead and actually, well, let's test it. So we'll put a, actually, let's just test it on the model. I think that works pretty good. So copy, let's go back into our model now. All right, and so we're gonna delete this and put in our updated version. Okay. And I think a couple of things. All right. Um, I get back into, we kind of saw this in the end of the last video. These are scalar quantities we're calculating here. And um, I think to kind of keep things straightforward right now, I will turn it into a vector. All right, and I'm going to remind you that what it's looking for here is X, Y, Z forces. All right. And so let's get a DMUX. No, not a DMUX, a MUX. Okay. Make this a little bit bigger. Let's add a third port for entry. And we'll take that in. We'll send that in like that, and I'll get a constant of zero. And we'll set the x and y values to zero. Okay. And since this takes up a little bit of space, I'm going to just, oops, got a little, an additional issue here, right? And that that's coming out of a bus. Right, so let's get our bus selector. All right, and now I'll. Just kind of pack that into a subsystem. I might clean this up in various ways as we uh, kind of proceed. And um, well, but uh, I'll, I'll, for this video, I'll just kind of keep it like this, All right? Just call it get thrust vector, All right? Lift. Drag plus. This will be thrust vector. Make it a little bit readable. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And so I'm going to just copy this a few times. And so, again, make sure I get all these connections right. So X in on the motor measurement, and then X in for the thrust. Y in for the thrust, and then Y in for the motor measurements. Let's make this a little smaller, drag it over here, and we'll do this a fourth time. Oops.
Okay. All right. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to be a little bit attentive to numbers that will work. And uh, I'm not saying these are the values we're going to really use that we're still kind of conceptually built, or I'll call it structurally building this model. And we're going to, you know, uh, get a little bit more specific about, you know, real numbers for for parameters like lift and drag coefficients on propellers uh, as we move through this. So anyways, let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see that it puts into my workspace uh, a, um, or I'll just do it this way. Type in propeller. But this is a data structure with lift coefficient and uh, and drag lift to drag right there. All right, so let's get back here. And so this will be propeller dot lift coefficient, and this will be propeller dot Lift to drag. Okay. And now it's just going to reuse those in these. Okay, and we'll hit run. Good thing spinning up. And I did a kind of a pre calculation, I think around 15 seconds that we're going to get a takeoff, but that's where my mouse is right now. So let's see if that's true. Yep, good. All right, so, anyways, um, the purpose of this video was to really set up this relationship between propeller speed and thrust. Uh, I think the next video will focus a little bit more on the drag. And uh, that'll be real important because, uh, you know, knowing that drag, we're going to know what we're going to require of our motors and we're going to begin to uh, be able to assess uh, the, the power requirements of this mission. All right. Anyways, thank you.